All right, before you do your first candle making class, you wanna make sure that you have all the right supplies. In this video, I'm gonna go over exactly all of that. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcrafted, and today we're gonna to talk about what candle supplies you need for doing your own candle making classes, or if you're opening up your own candle bar. I, this topic kind of came out of the blue in the last couple days, so I wanted to hurry up and make a video on this one because I am in the process of opening up the candle bar at the shop and basically getting the candle classes back up and going. They've been down for a long time just with logistics and getting the shop set up and getting supplies back in. Uh, but we're finally back up and going, so I figured as long as I have all the supplies here at the house, uh, I, might as well, I might as well make a video and show everybody what I'm working with since so many people had that question. So first off, I will say, if anybody is new to the channel and you've never done a candle making class, uh, what I'm talking about is basically having, uh, we have our own shop, so what we're gonna do is have people come in uh, right around six at a time max, just for the space that we have right now. Uh, six people come in, we basically go through and show them how to make their own candles from start to finish. Uh, we keep it very simple for these classes. It's not a real in-depth class for candle makers or people that wanna be candle makers. This is a class just for people to come in, have fun, and make their own candle. And I've done a video on this one in the past, but I figured I would go through and update it since a lot of things have changed. And I'm doing some different things than I did in the first class. So basically trial and error, this is what I've come to. This is what I, I have found out that works the best. So we're gonna go ahead and start out. So basically the first thing you're gonna wanna do is have a wax melter. In the beginning, I used a Presto Pot. They work great. But if you're doing larger classes, they tend to fill up or empty really fast. So you end up having to use two of them. But depending on where you are, running two Presto Pots at the same time may not work. Uh, I know a lot of the venues I did in the beginning just couldn't support two of those Presto Pots running at the same time. So it would always trip the breaker, the power strips. Uh, ended up having to get two power strips uh, and they worked at some places, didn't work at other places. So having a larger wax melter is definitely ideal. Uh, and obviously you're gonna have to figure that out with how many people you're having. So we're only doing six people per class right now. So the basic West Sound candle supply melter that we sell, uh, that's gonna be perfect for this one. It holds about 19 pounds. We can go through a couple different classes with that one. And of course, you're gonna wanna have that melting before the class starts. So I'm gonna get that one going. We've got a class coming up Saturday. We'll just have that up and going and fully melted probably about a good hour or two before the class starts. All right, so I'm gonna go through and show you the basic supplies that we're working with, and then I'll talk a little bit about the class at the end of the supplies. So what we're starting with here is when everyone comes in, this isn't really a necessary thing, but it looked kind of cool. This is just a slate board. And I'll go ahead and pop a picture up here or here where it shows kind of the setup with this one. This is basically just a placemat uh, where everything is gonna be set up so that when people come in, everything is on that slate tray. And then of course on that tray, we're gonna have a basic pouring pitcher. Uh, you can get the regular ones. Uh, there's some great ones out there. The little mini pouring pitchers that all candle makers use is a nice one. I've used that one before, but I thought these looked a little bit nicer. And I got this from the Websterant store and I'll, and I'll go ahead and include a link to that in the video description down below. But these look a little bit nicer. They're stainless steel, they're easy to clean. In some of the traveling workshops I've done previously, I took the, the dollar store measuring cups. They work great. They're a pain in the butt to clean. So I throw those away every time, which is a little bit of a waste, but it's about 10 to $15 for all of them. So it's not a huge hit if you do have to throw them away, but having these definitely will save money over time. And then of course, from there, we've got our vessel, which I've used this one. This is the Lumen Vogues from West Sound Candle Supply. This one works extremely well. It's a nice size candle. So anybody coming in, making a candle, if they're paying 35, 45, $55 for a class, whatever you're doing, this candle is the, basically the value is there. So when they get done making this and they're burning this at home, they're gonna really feel like they got something out of it. And then of course, along with that, we've got uh, the two wicks uh, and these are wicks that work in this vessel. I've tested this one before. I know these work. And then on top of that, we've got, see if I can focus in right there. We've got our wick stickers and a warning label for the bottom of the vessel. And then normally for my videos, you guys have seen that I used a hollowed out Bic pen to place all the wicks. Uh, those don't look really nice for a class. So I went ahead and got a metal straw, which works out really well. So basically the wicks will go through there. They can hold them. 
and then place them in the vessel real easy without having to get their fingers all the way down on the vessel. And just on top of that, they look really nice. And this isn't the one that I've got for the class. This is one I have here. Uh, this is just a bar spoon. You can pick these up from the Webstaurant store also, and I'll include a link to all that stuff down below. And I don't have the bar spoon that I'm using for the class here. I left it at the shop, but it's the same color. It's this same copper bronze color that the straw is. So we've got both of those set up. And then to help with placing the wicks, we've got these custom, see if I can get those in there. We've got them custom made from Design House uh, for Clove and Ivy. Uh, these are the centering devices for the wicks. And then we've got the wick holder and that one I'm not gonna get in focus. <laughs> See if I can maybe get that one there. Not even close. So the wick holder at the top of the vessel. So once everything gets done, they just go ahead and wrap those up and then they can let them sit. And then of course, once they're done with the class, we've got bags uh, for absolutely everybody. So this one, we just have these in the shop. They're cloven ivy bags. Uh, this isn't the actual tissue paper that goes in it, but we've got Stanley handcrafted tissue paper. We've got the cloven ivy bags. And then the whole time they're doing the class, I went ahead and had aprons made with cloven ivy on them. So another nice touch. It's not necessary, but it is nice. And a lot of people like to wear those. Uh, it definitely helps out if people are taking selfies, posting to Instagram, TikTok, or anything like that. You've got something where your class is branded. So as far as supplies go, that's literally it. We really don't have too much out there. Uh, the initial kind of making or pouring of the class only takes probably... 25, 30 minutes at the most. I usually put the classes out for maybe about an hour and a half just because we want to give time for the wax to cool down. And then while the wax is cooling, this is something I tell everybody when they're doing a candle making class, have something for people to do during that hour. Obviously having refreshments or drinks if you can is a great thing so people can kind of walk around and mingle. Uh, we have the luxury of having our own shop. So hopefully people will wander around in the shop uh, and look at the things that we actually have in the shop for sale so they can do that. And then the other thing that we typically have people do is do something creative with their labels. So we'll have something there and it basically turns into an arts and crafts session. So I've got stamps, I've got scissors, I've got, I've got cutouts. And I encourage people to spend probably the next 10, 15 minutes just going through and kind of creating your own labels or just grabbing a marker and writing the scent name or your name or anything you want on the label. And then for some classes, uh, and then for some classes, I have a second activity, something that can usually take a half hour to 45 minutes, something again, basically a second activity for people to do while their candle is hardening and curing. Another very quick and easy one is sugar scrubs. It doesn't take too much to put those together. Uh, they can make them in about 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, and you can get some vessels or some little kind of makeup trays that fit that stuff perfect. And then when it comes time to do the classes, I learned this over time. Uh, when I did my very first class, I looked at it like a bunch of candle makers who were in there coming in to learn how to make candles. So I went through everything. I talked about the different waxes. I talked about the different wicks. I talked about the fragrance oils and went into probably a 20 minute uh, detailed explanation about candles, which nobody cared about. So <laughs> I quickly just took away all that stuff and kept it basic. I went through, told them the six, seven, eight steps, whatever it's going to take uh, for the class. Here's what we're going to do. Go ahead and pick your oils. Here's what we're going to do with the wicks. Here's how we're going to pour it. And then I go through the steps one by one. I'll have everybody go pick their vessels and then come back to the table. And then after that, I'll have everybody go pick out their fragrance oils. What do they want to have their candles smell like? Bring that back to the table. And then once they've got the vessel and the oils picked out, I'll go ahead and we'll have everybody place the wicks. And then of course, going for getting the wax, pouring it, setting the wicks. And I do these one by one. I try not to let everybody just kind of give them a set of instructions and then just let them run wild because you will have people that get held up either setting the wicks or doing their labels or picking their oils. So you definitely want to guide people step by step. Uh, I had a couple classes where I ended up where people were done pouring their candles and somebody hadn't even set their wicks yet. And this was a larger class, so I didn't notice they hadn't done that. So they were a good 20 minutes behind. Uh, and that isn't a huge deal, but when people are waiting for their candles to harden and somebody is 20 minutes behind, that's a long time for somebody to sit there and wait. So I definitely tell people to guide people step by step. In the smaller classes, it's a lot easier to do this. 
you can monitor what people are doing, walk over, help them. Uh, and in the smaller classes, you usually get people working together to help them also. And it just makes everything run smoother. And then basically everybody's right in step with, with one another for getting the candle done. And then if you're doing any kind of mobile candle making class or going somewhere to do this, uh, everybody is usually going to wait around. So it could be anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours uh, before everything is done and they're taking their candles home. The other kind of luxury about having my own shop is if somebody does need to take off, I can have them set their candle on the shelf and we'll just let it sit there uh, until they can come pick it up in the next day or two. And as far as the candle making class goes, that's literally just about it. Uh, I can't think of anything else I really do in the class. Uh, again, having drinks, refreshments, anything like that is always a bonus because people are going to wait that hour. Uh, some people may blast through uh, creating their labels in two minutes and then they've got another 58 minutes to wait for their candles. So having anything that they can do, uh, eat, drink, anything like that or shop around is always a bonus for you. So I hope that was helpful for anybody that has a candle class coming up. I know I've been talking to a lot of people in the, in the last week or two who do have candle classes coming up. So I tried to answer every question that I was getting from them and even some of the ones that I thought of when I was, again, making my own candle classes. But if I did miss something, please let me know what it was in the comment section down below and I'll go through and try to do a follow up video. And I'm going to try to record this upcoming first class uh, so that I can put that into a future video. So. If you guys want to see anything or if you guys want to know anything from this video, again, please let me know and I'll add it to that one. And if anybody does a candle class after watching this one, please let me know in the comment section how it went and we'll see you in the next video.